Hello and welcome to Color Multimedia Enterprises and the Story Dev Editor label is missing for some reason. <laughs> My name is Luke and I am going to be showing you some more video tutorials on Story Dev. And I'm going to also show you some additional functionality with the Story Dev. First of all, I'm just going to load a project that I have been using. So I'm just going to select this. Okay, so as you can tell, last time we were looking at transitioning and showing character and background images. Transition and transitioning the passage and character image, so changing the size and location of them. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use variables in order to get to different passages. So as you can see I've got a bit of code here that works. Um, so I'll go through that in a minute. Now I also wanted to show you a bit more about how to remove character images and also remove the back uh, BG image if you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two links. So in here what I'm going to do is remove BG image and in the code what I'm going to do is remove BG image close the link and if I go down once again what I'm going to do is remove car image and what I'm going to do is remove car image, but I'm going to put true into the first parameter. And the reason I'm going to put that there is so that I don't change the passage size and location back to its default. So by saying true, I basically say, don't chain, don't put the default size and location of the passage. Just keep it where it is. Um, so let me save that. And I shall test the game and see how it looks. So click here to continue. So as you can see, we've got two more links. We can remove the background image and we can also remove the character image. So as you can see, if I, if I were to, let's say, remove this, get rid of the remove car image, uh, true even. Um, so test game. So let's try this. Uh, so if we were to do that, as you can see, it automatically um, resizes itself. So I'm going to keep it like that because I actually want to do that. So in the next link, what I'm going to do is type in continue, and I'm going to get, and I am going to go to passage three, where the combat is. Now I will show you how this works in a moment but for now what I'm going to do is just show you how it works for the time being so I'm gonna recompile again continue continue um, oh oh yes of course so I haven't actually set the variables so I am going to need to do that so enemy is probably equal to 30 and y is equal to 5 so let's do that y is equal to 5 and enemy is equal to 30. There we go. As you can see it automatically adjusts the layout. So I'm going to test game. Continue, continue. Okay. So I can click on this and it will do a random number and then Congratulations, you defeated the beast before five turns ended. So let's take a look at the code and see what it's doing. So I've got several if statements here. And we're determining what we're going to do when this happens, when that happens, and la -de -da -de -da. So, firstly, what does the first if do? So what I'm doing 
is I'm checking to see if the enemy variable, which I specialized here, uh, initialized here, rather. So I've set it to 30 here, and in here what I'm doing is I'm going to check to see if it's equal to or less than zero. If y is not equal to zero, then I'm going to go to passage four, which is this one here. Victorious, congratulations, you defeated the beast before five turns ended. Else if y is equal to zero. So if y is zero, so if we take a look here, we've got y minus minus. Basically what that does is it decrements y by one. So when it hits zero, we've been defeated by the beast. <clears throat> So it will go to this passage, combat. If it doesn't match either of those, what we're going to do is append show enemy health. And then we're going to set it with the enemy value. So initially it's 30 and then we take it with the link that we append here. So first of all, I've got append show, which I've done new line plus new line so basically all that's really doing is I mean I don't technically need to do that I could just do this if I wanted to and it'll do the same thing um, append link damage enemy so when that link is clicked we're going to execute oops all of this so y minus minus I'm going to decrement y enemy minus oh, why do I keep doing that? <laughs> Enemy minus equals rand 510. Now rand allows us to grab a random number between five and 10. They're both inclusive, which means that it will include five and it will include 10. So it could be between those values, five and 10, random number. And it's then going to take that away from the current value of enemy. And then we're going to go to passage three. So we're going to basically refresh the passage. And that's what you saw earlier when we test game. Once again, so if we go here, continue, damage enemy, as you can see. And it did a random on 10, three times in a row. That was very uh, lucky. Let's change this, shall we? What if we were to do three and seven? Would it be possible? Maybe. If we're lucky. Continue. Damage enemy. Seven. Okay. So, unfortunately, it didn't take us... It took us five turns to try and get it to as little health as we could. But, unfortunately, the beast torn us apart and yeah <laughs> that's just uh, what I decided to write there so that's a little bit on how to let's say initialize combat now alternatively what I could do is use JSON to initialize the enemy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to use JSON instead so, JSON is a lot more complex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Notepad++ and I'm going to write all my JSON in there. And the reason why is because I can organize it and then I'm going to use this here and to copy and paste the JSON to process and it will allow us to use that processed text to put it into a string later. So I'm going to go over to, um, where is it, Notepad++, down there somewhere, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to close all of this. <laughs> no, no. Um. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Whatever, 
Okay, so the way that I'm going to initialize the, this JSON is by initializing it as an array. So square brackets allows us to basically initialize an array. We can we can of course do that in here as well, but we're not going to. Then to initialize an object, I'm going to use curly brackets. No. First of all, I'm going to set the language to JavaScript. There we go. Okay, so square brackets that makes this an array. Curly brackets that makes it an object. Now, in this object, I'm going to use a few values. I'm going to do id zero, comma, which allows us to go on to our next field, which is going to be name the beast's name so let's call this beast spider and in here what I'm going to do is health and let's set that to 30 as we did last time so I am going to copy that and I'm going to copy it in here I'm going to process and copy now what I'm going to do is enemies is equal to I'm going to open and close the string here and then I'm going to do that. So as you can see it's um, done all of this for us. I'm just going to clean it up a bit. I don't know why it's doing that if I may be honest but I don't, it doesn't really matter that much. Obviously, if you want it to be a bit more organized, then you can do that. So, now what we're going to do is, in fact, encapsulate that around parse JSON. Now, parse JSON, what does that do? Well, it's going to parse this into a JSON object that we can use later on in the program. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so I'm going to save this, and I'm going to get rid of these two. So I'm no longer going to have any of these turns or anything, and I'm going to get rid of all this as well. Okay, so how do we work with JSON? So first of all, I want to get all of the values within the JSON. So let's say I want to get, let's say, the um, just ID 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Game Events. I'm going to add a Game Event. And I'm going to say here, Add Creature. Now in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a temporary temporary data and that temporary data value is going to basically allow us to use um, the values within the temp data array to determine what we're going to do with this data so basically bear with me <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop for i in zero zero dot 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 and then I'm going to do enemies dot length okay so in here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do if temp data zero meaning we're going to get the ID and then what I'm going to do is enemies I dot ID then I'm going to open that now I'm going to save this and I'm going to go back to here and the reason why is because I want to go over to here and I'm going to Go back here actually, and I'm going to set up the array. So I'm going to do temp data, and in here, what I want to do is grab the first ID. 
what I'm then going to do is call event zero. So what am I doing? Firstly, I'm initializing a variable called temp data. That is going to be an array. In there, I'm going to put zero. So theoretically speaking, I'm going to grab ID zero from here. If we go back to game events, in here, what I'm doing is I'm going to go through the enemies array, or rather JSON, and I'm going to then use the first index of temp data, which is zero, and I'm going to match it with the ID of enemies. If it does match, what we want to then do is append show. Actually, that's not what I'm going to do is enemy name is equal to enemies i dot name and then enemy health is equal to enemies i dot health oops there okay so now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is save it, obviously, that's what I just did. And then I'm going to go back to here and then I'm going to do and then I'm going to do append show. Enemy. And then in here what I'm going to do is enemy health. No, name even. <laughs> and then I'm going to do another append show. This time, what I'm going to do is backslash n and then health plus enemy health. Save that. Now let's test it. Continue, continue. Okay, it's not showing anything. So, there's obviously a problem with the variable somewhere. So we've got enemies is equal to parse JSON. So we've got that JSON there. It should technically work. So we've got ID zero, name, yeah. Game events, if we go here, we're setting enemy name to enemies I dot names. So that should be spider. Enemy health is equal to enemies I dot health which should equal 30. That should theoretically work, but it's not, which is really odd, actually. Huh. Interesting. Let me think I can't see why it wouldn't work okay I'm going to get rid of that call event what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that and put it into combat there Okay, test game. Continue, continue. Okay, still not doing anything. So it's nothing to do with co the of game event itself. That is interesting indeed. Why is it not working? It is really odd. Have I got this correct? You have to be careful with uh, these things because you want to make sure that they are correct um, so it is an array I've got the variable correct parse JSON as you can see I 
I thought sort of that would have made a difference. Another thing that we can do, of course, is take a look at the JSON that the JSON output in order to find any errors. So I'm just going to test game once more. Okay, now it's just not working at all. <laughs> so no, it doesn't look doesn't look like it likes the semicolon for some reason. <laughs> Um, okay, that is interesting, very interesting, and I am not entirely sure what's going on there, if I may be honest, so I'm going to be right back, and once I've found the error, I will go into the next tutorial and go into a bit more complex JSON, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.